All right, welcome into another episode of the Original Game Geeks podcast. This is going to be a quick hitter episode with some breaking news. I'm Scott Bernstein, your your um, host, along with my co-host and partner in crime, Jimmy Bucciolato, the doctor. Hey, now. New World Order for life. <laughs> Shouting out wrestling from the 90s. And uh, yeah, Jimmy and I, on a, and on a side, Jimmy and I spend a lot of nights texting back and forth about, about, about the uh, the rock and wrestling era yeah. of the 1980s when we were child uh, in our childhood about uh, Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man and Ricky the Dragon. <laughs> We've been in studio a long time today, so we're a bit slap happy at, at this point. So uh, we are going to talk about the recent arrests that have been made in the last 24 hours uh, in the attempted assassination of Montreal Mafia Don, alleged Montreal Mafia Don, Leonardo Rizzuto, uh, who survived a attempted hit back on March 15th of this year. Uh, he was driving in on, the, on a highway uh, in the affluent area of Laval, which is, the, is like kind of the Beverly Hills of Montreal. It's where all the, um, a lot of the highest, level criminals live out there as well as just, you know, people in high society in general. And, uh, that afternoon he, uh, was shot, was shot at while he was driving on the express. We ended up diverting into a off ramp and pulled into a a funeral parlor parking lot had been shot in the leg, but was attacked by, um, matching Porsche sports cars, one black, one red, the shots came from the black car. Uh, that was three months ago. And there were arrests made within a couple days of the attack. Uh, and then those two guys that were arrested back in March, they were let go. And now they have been officially indicted as the shooters, as the co-conspirators in the attempted assassination of Leonardo Rizzuto. Their names are Kevin Rochebrun and uh, Steve. Emmanuel uh, Bartolome. Isn't it Steve Emmanuel? Uh, I don't or know. Just Emmanuel. Yeah, I, I thought know. it was Steve Bartholomew. That, that might be his nickname. I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, Bartholome and Rochebrun. Um, this is the most recent, at least, uh, you know, legal machination of this long standing mob war uh, up north of the border. Leonardo Rizzuto's. You're right. I'm sorry. It is Steve Emanuel's his middle name. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, and Rizzuto was kind of the last man standing in his. He's not only one of the last man standing in the Rizzuto crime family organization. He's one of the last man standing in his actual blood family. Yeah, right. Uh, he has lost his his grandfather, his uncle and his brother in the warfare that erupted after his dad was extradited to uh, serve prison time in the United States back in 2009. His dad came home in 2012, lived about a year, and then succumbed to a battle of cancer. We kind of talked about it on here, I think. Leonardo Rizzuto is like the real-life Canadian Michael Corleone. He was not pegged to be a mob boss, even though he was born into a mafia dynasty. He went to law school and... uh, either was or is a, a practicing attorney and was just like Michael Corleone in the, in the Godfather uh, story had was forced for the sake of keeping the organization that his father had built alive. He was forced to step into the role as boss. And in this case, it looks like, you know, over the last decade or so, Leonardo Rizzuto has been forced to do the same thing. I don't think 20 years ago when Leonardo Rizzuto was in his thirties, uh, many people would have predicted that he would, uh, in his early fifties would be, would be leading this what's left of this crime family. Yeah. Similar to the film, there's this crisis where he um, feels obligated, but I, I agree with you. I don't think there was any evidence that prior to that, he was uh, being groomed or something to, or socialized to step into those um, to that role. So I don't know about Bar- Bartholomew, but we know that Roche Brune has direct ties and convictions to this Canadian mafia war that's been raging for the last decade and a half. Uh, He was uh, convicted back in 2017 of another attempted assassination of a Montreal mafia figure that was in the Rizzuto crime family. His name was Marco Pizzi. 
and PZ was very close to the group of guys that took over the family after Vito Rizzuto died. There was like a couple years between Rizzuto's death and when Leonardo Rizzuto took over the family. Um, at first, the family, I believe uh, there was like a, like a panel. And then at some point, uh, Skunk Giordano and Sauce uh, Solicito were running things. They were killed in the same kind of six or seven weeks in 2016. Then a couple, either weeks or months after that, uh, Marco Pizzi survived an assassination attempt. Kevin Rochebrun, who was just indicted on the Leonardo Rizzuto attempted murder, was convicted of the attempted murder of Marco Pizzi and had to go do uh, two or three years in prison. And again, Pizzi was connected to um, Pancho Contrera, the DeMalo brothers, and a guy named Tony, uh, I'm going to butcher the name, Tony uh, Colacchio. Colocchio. Colaccio. And the uh, Contrera, they're related to the right. Rizzuto's. Well, and then the Contrera is like another, that's another mafia clan, clan yeah. that's always Transatlantic. Been al- yeah. Ties to Venezuela. Italy. And uh, has always been aligned with the Rizzuto's. Um, PZ had been indicted with a lot of these guys um, uh, w- within the, the, the upper ranks of the Rizzuto crime family. Um, so he's a veteran of this war, even though he's only 30, uh, 32 years old, I believe. Um, so, you know, let's, un- yep. let's unpack this a little bit. I don't want to go too long on this, but this is all, we did a, a quick hitter episode and then we did a longer episode. Uh, so there's been two episodes where we've talked about this in the last couple months where there's like a war within a war going on right now in Montreal. A, a former ally of Leonardo Rizzuto, uh, Fran, Francesco Del Basso, uh, who goes by the nickname or went by the nickname Chit, was one of Vito Rizzuto's top enforcers, a guy that struck fear everywhere he went for 20, 25 years. And there's news coming out that I, I, I might have known, but I, I didn't know it as much as I know now. First, there's the belief that Del Basso was behind the attempt on on Rizzuto, and that I think they can link him to renting the cars, yeah. which is really the how, how can you, That's not smart. The conventional wisdom right now is that these two guys that just got indicted were working on behalf of Del Basso. Um, Del Basso, it turns out, was attacked twice before the Leonardo Rizzuto attempted hit. Uh, according to these court records, Del Basso avoided assassination once in November of 22, once of January of 23. He was prevented from leaving the country in the, in the days after Rizzuto survived the March 15th attack. And then earlier this month, Del Basso's killed in, a, in the parking lot of his gym in, in the West Island section of Montreal. Uh, so there's quite a bit of um, drama that has erupted in, in a drama-filled uh, shooting conflict that's been going on now for, for almost 15 years. It doesn't look like there's any end in sight. We've talked on here, and I've written about it on gangsterreport.com, that there's the belief by investigators that Del Basso was being supported in his efforts to get rid of Leonardo Rizzuto by the Hells Angels, who had had a long time relationship with Vito Rizzuto. So there's just so many moving parts here. And yeah. it's kind of emblematic of what's been going on since the 2000s. But if you look at the time frame, I mean, this is, we admit this is speculative or trying to decode because the story is still unfolding. But if you look at the time frame, it seems like if Del Basso was behind the Rizzuto hit, which I'm, I believe, I, seems like he was um, that that end up, may have been more of a defensive yeah. measure on his part. than the, we, we were kind of assuming we thought, it was like a coup d'etat kind yeah. of like he was trying to take over. But, it, but now that we know that there were those two other attempts on his life, this might've been retaliation in a way. If, 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 if well, kill Rizzuto the guy that's was, trying to kill you, right, to, you know, right. Get him first before he gets you. Right. And I think there is, 
some reporting right now in Montreal, I don't want to take credit for it, that is saying that Del Basso, who used to be close, not just with Vito Rizzuto, but was very close to Leonardo Rizzuto. They're the same exact age. They're both 53, or Del Basso was 53. Um, I was told by people that are close to the situation that back in the 90s when, um, uh, when, when Rizzuto was just a mafia prince and wasn't really a mobster, that Vito Rizzuto trusted Chit Del Basso to bodyguard his mm. kids um, and, and watch their backs. And that when Del Basso came out of prison after doing time for the Rizzuto crime family, according to this new reporting, the people that were leading the crime family at that time, I'm not sure where Leonardo Rizzuto played in this, blocked his return, wouldn't give him back his rackets. Yeah, it which, seems like they tried to marginalize. Him. Right, which, if, if you're just doing the math in your head, uh, probably played a role in, in things... Uh, to the, reaching a boiling point uh, in the last six months. Well, when he was on the streets, it it sounds like he had uh, a lot of action with uh, gambling, extortion, loan sharking. And so when he gets out of prison, he expects to, to earn again. And it seems like he was being marginalized. And um, it seems like, again, we're decoding, things are unfolding, that he was trying to then carve out his own space independent of the, the Rizzuto organization yeah. and that that didn't go over well with and, the Rizzuto and camp. He, he was facing a case when he died for extorting his priest. I mean, I'm, I didn't misspeak there. Uh, his wife had given uh, to the church or maybe she hadn't. According to Chit Del Basso last fall, fall of 22, he went to the priest of his church and said, you know, my wife had given money in the collection plate last Sunday and she didn't mean to give that money. It was a mistake. And you better give me back the money that she gave. And, oh, you can't give it back to me. So I'm going to come and I'm going to charge you points. And every week I'm going to come collect money. Wow. This was his own church, his own uh, Monsignor. Uh, veg. So, um, you know, last thing I'll say, and, and then we'll uh, sign off and we'll be, we'll be keeping tabs on the situation. What I found interesting, and if you're reading between the lines here, Rose Brun and Bartholomew had their attorneys push off their pleas. And this wasn't a situation where they were if they had just been arrested and they didn't know they were being investigated or they didn't know that they were uh, the top targets in this case and they were picked up on Monday and they went in front of a, 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 a judge to plea a couple hours after their arrest, it would make sense to me that their attorneys would have to say, you know, listen, we got to see right. what's going on. But these two alleged assailants have known that they've been the target of law enforcement since March. So your ducks have already been in a row, if you know conventional wisdom. What do you have to think about? Again, I'm I'm speculating. I'm not saying that Roche Brun and Bartholomew are are considering cooperating, but it it it's suspicious to me that they wouldn't just plead not guilty uh, when they're hauled in in front of a judge after three months of an investigation. Well, also just something at the macro level with the criminal justice system in Canada. Attempted murder, you got to get a slap on the wrist right. anyhow. Right. So I, I don't, yeah, I, well, look I, at, I don't know what's going on. Look at the attempted murder that Roche Brun copped to back in 17. He was out by 2020. Right, right. So we'll, we'll keep tabs on it for you. Um, but two arrests have been made in Montreal this week. Uh, Kevin Roche Brun and Steve Bar uh, Bartholomew have been charged in the Leonardo Rizzuto attempted assassination from March 2023. For OG Pod, Scott Bernstein, Jimmy Gucciolato, we're out.